So this is the second video of a three-part video where I'm showing you how to undertake a holistic modeling of your interactional composites. And in this second part, we'll be taking a pre-existing model that I've already done, apply the loading, run the simulation and generate the contour plot. That's what we're going to do in this video. If you're interested, sit back and relax as we get started with the video. So how do you set up a tensile deformation in the transverse X axis on a unidirectional composite? And I've got a picture here that kind of captures this for us. So basically we have the unidirectional composite with the fiber and an interface region around it. So clearly what we want to do is that we want to load it in the X axis according to the reference frame that is given here. So first thing we need to do is to cover the system up with some kind of representative loading condition which has, is what I've shown here. So basically you apply loading on all the edges leaving the three faces here and then I would choose to use a reference point because I'm going to I'm thinking subsequently about how to extract the stress strain data from the system. So I'm going to use a reference point that is away from the sample from the specimen and I find the location of that. And then I'm going to apply my load in the X axis on that. So in this case, I'm choosing to apply a 10 micron load on the system. But the key is that you're going to use a, a constraint equation, a linear constraint equation that links this reference point to what's going on on that face. The idea here is that then you have a possibility of extracting what's happening at reference one in terms of stress strain data. But this is how you will apply a transverse loading in the X direction. What about loading in the y axis in the y direction so the same thing could apply so again we have a system we mix it up with a boundary condition in all three dimensions of the system and then the open faces here we'll, we'll leave them there i'm going to choose a different reference point closer to the top end which is where i'm going to i'm going to call it reference point two and then i'm going to apply a loading in the y axis to push the system up and then of course the white top will be the region that I'm going to load and so a kinematic linear constraint will have to link what's happening at node 2 to everything that is happening at the top of this and again I'm going to apply a 10 micron unit loading. For the z-axis we do a similar thing again what I will do is I'll apply the normal uniaxial style boundary conditions and then go back to reference point one apply a loading in the reference point one axis so this will be a 12 micron unit and this is about 10 percent of the length what i need to then do next is to make sure that i can actually make the linear constraint between reference point one and the front face so that when i apply a load at reference point one it will be translated directly to what's happening at the z front and that's how you apply in the exact formation within an abacus model. So we're going to go into abacus and begin to show how the whole model can be set up. The first thing is to attach boundary conditions. So let's call this X back a roller. So we're only doing this for the uniaxial cases in the initial boundary condition. So we need to fix the back X back. So we are preparing for the share the uniaxial deformation. So I'm only going to fix it in the X axis. So we'll do the same and this will be Y back roller. So we're now fixing in the Y direction. So this will be Y back or Y base. So I'll fix it in the two direction. And then finally, Z back roller. So only in the Z direction, in, are we fixing it? And it will be the third axis. So we've got this. And this is what we were showing earlier on when you say you buff the system in the planes that are not showing with boundary conditions that are fixed and they are all roller boundary conditions. And we could then think about how do you create the constraint equation. So I'm going to create a constraint equation. So basically here, I'm going to say, okay, my X equation. So it will be an equation like this. So now what we have would be that, okay, the question one here, the set in the X axis would be obviously attached to reference point one in degree of freedom one, degree of freedom one. No, so with the X front, and then the degree of freedom one and minus one. So this is sort of what we get. So we're basically constraining the behavior of reference of the X front with the re reference point one in the one axis deformation. So that's X constraint equation. So we can then do Y constraint. And with the Y equation, we'll do a similar thing. Okay, one, but now we're working with Y top. So it's Y top that we're working in the two direction in the two direction. With reference point two, remember we want it to be on the two axis, and then minus one. So basically, the, again, this constraint equation 
linear constraint equation means that whatever is happening at y top is linked to what's happening at y2, reference point 2. And then the final one is the z axis, so this will be the z equation. Now with the z equation, one, we're looking at the z front, the front in the third axis, third axis, and it will obviously be associated with reference point 2, and then we get minus 1. So that's what, so whatever is happening at the front will be linked to what's happening at reference point. Okay, I'll, I'll use reference point one instead, you know, just because it's the one that is closest. So basically, this phase is linked to that phase. So we've got all three of them implemented, but we'll need all three of them in setting up the model. So this is our, our dummy model. So I'm going to create a copy of that. I'm going to call it maybe UD Composite RVE Single Fiber Extension. So let's do the extension first. And so with the extension, what we really need with the extension basically is the boundary conditions will be correct. The reference point, then we need to apply a load. So I'm going to call this my extension load. It will be associated with a history output. And then it will be linked to the reference point one as we expected. And I'm applying it in the one direction. I'm going to apply a 10 micron unit loading. So what this basically means that I'm using 10% of load to load, so I'm loading at this point. But clearly, we want this to be linked to what's happening on the Z front phase, X front phase. And so that's where the constraint equation comes in. So I'm going to re suppress these two because they are not going to be necessary for this. Then I'm going to also go to the history variable. I don't want it to give me anything happening in node 2, so I'm going to suppress that. So I'm not interested in that point. So we've got all the x equations not working and all that so we've got everything set up and then we can then go and set up the job so we've, we've done that for extension so we can do the same so i'll use the original model and call the same ud so we'll do the same for the y tension so now again the boundary conditions will be the same just as i need to apply my y tension load so it will be associated with a loading step and that loading step will be linked to reference point 2 continue so it's linked there and in the two direction i'm going to again do a 10 micron unit loading so as i'm applying this load here it will be translating to the z y top phase and how do we do that we use a constraint equation to do that so i'm going to suppress those two leaving only the y tension to be the equation that would work and also in terms of history variables i'm not interested in what's happening in one so i'm going to suppress that leaving only that so it gives me what's happening in reference point two and every other thing is the same so i'll go ahead and submit the job so we'll do the same for the z case so again i'll create a copy and this will be so with the z tension everything remains the way it's supposed to be so we'll just go and again apply a load in the z axis so this will be my z tension load is associated with a history output with a loading step so that would be associated with reference point one like we said before so now it's going to be in the z axis but i want it to be 12 if you look here so you've got the loading there and it has to be make a connection with what's happening in there so how do we do that is the z equation that will make it happen so we suppress this leaving the z equation and then we'll go to our history output suppress two because we are only interested in what's happening in one okay so we've got all the uniaxial cases as they are supposed to be okay so now that we finished setting up the model and submitting the job so look at the simulation so the first thing we're looking at here is the x tensile deformation so if we look at what's happening so basically we are moving loading the body in this direction and you get a deformation an interesting deformation that looks like this so if we rotate it around so you could see what's happening so there's clearly the interface region that is failing as well as the fiber so if we go into the plastic equivalent plastic strain it even gives you a better picture of what is happening so basically there is a failure of the interface region you know plastic deformation of the interface region and that's then translating itself into the fiber into the matrix causing again this classic deformation that you see with where it forms a shear band of about 45 degree so this is what you see in the uniaxial tension so let's look at the y tension so if we look at the y tension okay so with the y tension you get a similar kind of deformation so you can if one made this so basically you're now pulling it in the y-axis in this direction and then again you look at what's happening so there's a clear failure of the interface in, in practice in reality you want this interface to 
incorporate with a damage model after the plastic deformation of the interface then you get the failure and fracture evolving through that but this is sort of what we see nicely around here again if you look at the plasticity of it it tells you clearly there's a lot of plastic deformation around the interface which is failing and this is what you would expect to see so with the z tension so again we expect it to be the case so the body is being pulled in this way the fiber is taking most of the loading so if you go into the plastic regime you can see that the interface has failed plastically as expected and this is what happens and this is why with composite materials the interface is usually the weaker part so most failure is triggered by the interface and this is what you see here what i've done is that in looking at the result that we've seen here i've kind of used a smaller interface from the one that we originally started with so you can see that it's a much smaller interface now that we've created the domain and we've applied all the loading and run the simulation of course the next thing you want to do is how can i generate the stress and strain data from this video so watch this video next